Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, in today's uh, lecture, we would be going through another unit from UGC Net Commerce point of view, which is uh, legal aspects of business. Okay, wherein there are different uh, acts in particular that we need to study from the exam point of view. Okay, and here's the list of these uh, acts which are important. And in today's uh, video, we'd be going through one of them, which is uh, Indian Contract Act 1872, okay? And over here, uh, there are many important uh, subsections from this particular act, which are important. And going by the past, uh, going by the past trends, elements of a valid contract is one of the most important topics, okay? Elements of a valid contract uh, can can provide you can come up in different uh, different language can come up with different n number of MCQ questions uh, in the exam and uh, there's a very high probability that you you might be seeing a question from especially from this particular section uh, which is elements of a valid contract okay so over here in today's lecture we will be going through the different elements of a valid contract starting with the very first element which is offer and acceptance okay uh, when we talk about any contract okay then then there needs to be an offer made by one party and the acceptance of the same offer by the other party then only there can be a valid contract Okay, so now let's read what exactly it's mentioned over here. It says there must be an offer by one party and its unconditional acceptance by the other party, thereby resulting in an agreement. Okay, again, like I mentioned earlier that there needs to be an offer. There has to be an offer from one party to the other party. Okay, that is one element over here. Second element in this particular point is that there needs to be an unconditional acceptance by the other party okay there, there it has to be very straightforward unconditional acceptance by the other party then only it can result in an agreement okay now point number two or element number two is intention of party is to create a legal relation okay or you can call it as a legal obligation okay wherein the parties to the contract must intend there has to be an intention there has to be an intention from both the parties it can't be one sided it can't be from the party who's offering or it just can't be from a party who's unconditionally accepting it has to be from both the parties then only it can form a valid contract okay there needs to be a genuine honest intent to create a legal obligation Okay, and in case of absence of such an intention, there is no contract. Okay, if basically uh, what this particular element intends to inform is that until and unless there is no legal obligation, which means it's not duly enforceable by law, then it's not a valid contract. Okay. So step one, if it's not a legal obligation, then which means it's not duly enforceable by law under any law whatsoever, then no one can be held for any breach or from any, any obligation because there, ha there has been no, no legal obligation at all. There is, there is nothing which can be enforced by law, which leads to ultimately null and void contract. It can't be called a valid contract. So there has to be a legal relationship, okay? Now coming to the third point or the element is lawful consideration. Consideration is something that you give, okay? It can be a service, can be a product or anything. 
here it's mentioned consideration is the price paid by one party in return to the act or the promise of the other okay it's a consideration uh, you, ju you just transfer exactly in return as per the agreement it was supposed to be given okay if uh, x was supposed to uh, construct your home then paying money was the consideration over here okay so let's go ahead and see thus an agreement is legally enforceable if each party gives something and gets something in return like in this particular example x got his house which was constructed by y and y got money for constructing the house of x okay so both the parties got something in return okay now the consideration must be an act of promise to do or not to do something okay ah uh, one can say ki if if the other party isn't doing anything then how is it a cons how is it a consideration no even not doing anything or making a promise or making a le making a promise that i won't act upon such a such a such a such a scenario which happens is also kind of providing some lawful consideration okay okay and also the consideration can be in past present or future it need not be that uh, it is supposed to be done immediately it can be something which was done in past or it is something considerations that would be provided in near future okay let's go ahead okay now the fourth element capacity of parties okay when we talk about capacity with it means nothing but competent whether the parties involved in a contract are competent or not okay whether they can or whether they are eligible okay to enter into a valid contract or not if they are not then the contract is not enforceable by law now simple example uh, which is a minor okay we have mentioned a list over here as well so the first one is a minor a minor is not competent and he can't be one of the parties into an agreement or a contract okay second a person of unsound mind if anyone can prove that one of the parties involved in a contract uh, is, is someone uh, who's not in a right state of mind okay a person of unsound mind okay this is something which is needs to be proved if someone wants to make a valid contract invalid or not enforceable by law then they need to prove these points okay so if someone is of unsound mind as well then also that particular party is not competent enough to enter into an agreement okay similarly a person expressly disqualified from entering into a uh, contract by any law this can happen for any reason if someone has defaulted on a particular thing then because of a particular act or a law like in case of uh, one can cite example of uh, vijay malya okay because he, he has defrauded different banks then he is basically in india he's kind of disqualified from entering uh, into any financial uh, financial uh, agreement with different banks or institutions okay so when someone is uh, expressly whether they are shown they are highlighted that so and so party so and so an individual can't enter into an, a contract then they are straight away disqualified and any contract with such party is completely and it's uh, it's completely null and void and it's not enforceable by law and it's not a valid contract okay now the fifth element is free consent okay consent mean consensus ad diem okay which is the agreement within the parties upon the same thing and the same sense okay and let's further complete this consent is not free if it is induced by coercion undue influence fraud misrepresentation okay 
first of all in any agreement any contract everywhere consent is very important okay but over here it says and specifically highlights free consent that is which means the the parties involved should be giving their consent without any coercion undue influence and because of any fraud or due to any misrepresentation okay so it's the consent should be free from all these these four points that we have mentioned in particular okay so uh over here like two points are very important first consent and second free consent and the four points mentioned if they are present then any con any consent is not free at all Cohesion is something which, which basically you can say someone is pressurizing you. Okay. They are they are threatening you to, to give your consent. For example, the most uh, commonly it is done in case of let's say properties. Okay. Will that the other the someone tends to force to sign uh, one of the parties into a contract by threatening them okay and then you have undue influence again that is again kind of uh, kind of forcing you yourself on someone to enter into a contract okay third you can can indulge in a fraud okay and fourth is your basic risk misrepresentation like like you you are telling them uh, telling the party that that you are the owner of the house whereas you are not you are misrepresenting yourself as the owner of the house just to have the other party get them into an agreement so also this is this is this doesn't lead to a free consent this is against free consent so any of these four points are there then consent is not free and then it's not a valid contract okay let's go ahead lawful object okay lawful object is very important which means the purpose the purpose behind the entire contract for a valid contract, the object for which the agreement has been made or for which you are entering into an agreement or a contract, it has to be lawful. Okay. You, you can't have a purpose which is illegal, which is fraudulent, which is immoral. Okay. If anything of that sort is prevailing in a contract, then that agreement is completely null and void. Okay it can't be a valid contract at all okay if if your purpose is like killing someone it's illegal act right uh, if your purpose is looting a bank okay it's it's illegal so all such objects which are not lawful are leads to invalid contract okay now the seventh element is certainty of terms everyone knows uh, there are certain uh, terms and conditions uh, you must have seen on different slips as well. For example, a simple parking ticket. Okay, when you when you park your car, you you get a parking ticket. There also at the bank it, uh, at the back it's written certain terms and condition. Okay, so for a valid contract, the terms and conditions should be certain, and they should not be vague and uncertain. By this, we mean that the terms should be, first of all, easily understandable to both the parties. They should be to the point. They should be relevant. They sh and they should not uh, involve anything which doesn't have to do anything, which doesn't have to do with the entire service or anything. For example, in case of, uh, in case of your parking ticket, uh, terms of con terms and condition are uh, mentioned are uh, something like uh, uh, the the owner it's the owner's responsibility uh, regarding regarding if anything happens to the car as well even though it's, you're parking in their parking slot uh, and having a proper ticket as well but they don't take any responsibility but at the same time they are specifically highlighting they are mentioning it uh, and it's pretty certain it's understandable to the uh, to the car to the car owner as well 
Okay, so there is nothing vague written in that. It's pretty certain and it's understandable to you. So there the terms are pretty straightforward. Okay, so it's it it leads to a proper valid contract. Whereas if if they write anything vague, uh, which doesn't have to do anything related to the parking of a car, then it it's something vague and it can't be treated as a valid contract. Okay. Now the eighth point is possibility of a performance. An agreement to do an impossible task is void. It's one of the best and the easiest way uh, to make a contract uh, void. Okay, if if the if the task involved in a particular contract or an agreement are something which is uh, which can't be done, it's it's next to impossible. Okay then all those uh, all those contracts are void 